All right, it's time to answer our chicken math questions I asked yesterday. First, I said if I have five chickens and they each lay one egg every day, how many eggs would I have at the end of the week? Let's see, how can we solve this? Well, we could draw a picture, right? So I've got five chickens. I know they're not perfect. This is an art class. Oh, goodness. Okay. Four, five chickens, right? And if they each lay one egg every day, well, that's one, two, three, four, five eggs in one day. But the question didn't ask about one day. The question asked if it was a whole week. So let me see, how many days are there in a week? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we start again. Seven, seven days in a week. So if I have five eggs on one day, then I have to say that there's going to be seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eggs from this chicken, and seven eggs from this chicken, and this chicken and so on, okay? Now, I have seven eggs out of each of my five chickens. You know what this kind of looks like? An array. Ah. So, now, I have a choice. I could count by fives and count each row because there's five eggs in each row. Each row represents the number of chickens. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Or I could count by sevens, counting each column. Each column representing each chicken and the days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Either way I do it, the answer is 35. I could also do it by using tally marks, having the days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then we start again. There's my days of the week. I have five chickens, that's five eggs each day. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Nadine. Nadine wants to talk about it. Okay? And again, I could count each tally one at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way till I got the end. Or I could count by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Still, my answer is 35 eggs. Another question I asked was, if I have five chickens and one turkey, how many birds do I have? Well, I've got pictures up here, so I can use my pictures of five chickens, and then I need to draw a picture of my one turkey. Hmm, let's see, big old tail on my one turkey. Okay, and I could count one, two, three, four, five, Six birds all together. Again, I could use tally marks. Okay, I'm looking at the number of birds. I've got one, two, three, four, five chickens and one turkey. One, two, three, four, five, six birds all together. Oh, I forgot to label this as 35 eggs in one week six birds all together. And the final question was, after we know how much, many eggs I have in a week, if I sold them for 75 cents each, how much money could I make? Well, now, here I have to decide what I'm going to do. I have to know, am I going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Here's a chart that helps me decide that, okay? 
And we need to look at if the groups are the same. Or if the groups are different. If we're going to end up with more. Or if we're going to end up with less. Okay? If we use this chart, it can help us decide if we're going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Okay? If the groups are the same size, for instance, each of my eggs, each of my eggs, each of my chickens laying one egg per day. It's the same for each chicken. Okay? And it's going to be more... I can multiply because remember, multiplication is repeated addition with same groups. If the groups are the same size, but the answer is going to be less, for instance, if I had said, I get 35 eggs in a week and I have five chickens, each chicken lays the same number of eggs, how many eggs does each chicken lay? Then you would know it's the same, the groups are the same size. But one chicken is going to lay less eggs than all of them together. That's when we know we need to divide. Now, if the groups are different, for instance, if I said, this chicken lays three eggs a week, and this one lays two eggs, this one lays eight eggs, we wouldn't be able to multiply. Multiplication is repeated addition when the groups are the same. If the groups are different, but the answer is going to need to be more, then we would add them together. That's when we use addition. If the groups are different sizes, the answer would be less. So, for instance, here, if I said I have six birds all together, one of them's a turkey, and the rest are chickens, how many are chickens? Well, we know we have a different size. I don't have the same number of turkeys as I have chickens, so the groups are different sizes. And we know I'm going to have less chickens than I have birds all together, so the answer would be less that's the one we would subtract. I would say six birds minus one turkey equals five chickens. All right, so let's get back to our question. When I said, if I know how many eggs I have in one week, which we know, that's 35, and I could sell those eggs for 75 cents each, how much money would I make? Well, every egg is gonna cost the same amount. Our groups are the same, and we're going to make more money than just one cent per egg, right? So we're going to need to multiply. So what the standard algorithm would look like here would be 35 times 75 cents. We'll convert to dollars later, okay? Now, I can choose how I'm going to do this. Today, I'm going to do this using the area model. I'm going to break 35 up into 30 and 5, and I'm going to break 75 up into 70 and 5. 70 times 30. Well, I can do 7 times 3 and then add the zeros. I'm going to count by 3, 7 times. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 21, plus 2 zeros at the end, 2100. Next, this section is going to be 70, because if this is 70, this is 70, times 5. Well, 7 times 5. I'm going to count by 5 7 times. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, with one zero at the end. 350. This section is going to be 5 times 30. If this is 30, this is 30. Well, five times three, I could choose to count by fives or threes. I like counting by fives better, so I'm going to count by fives three times. Five, ten, fifteen, with one zero at the end, because there's only one zero in our factors. Fifteen with a zero at the end, 150. This section, well, if this is five, then this is five. And if this is five, then this is five. So it's going to be five times five. Count by five, five times. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Now... To find it all together, I just need to add those. 2,100, 350, 150, and 25. 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. 5, 10, 11, 12.
three, the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two. Two thousand six hundred twenty-five cents. But I doubt I'm going to be going to the bank with two thousand six hundred twenty-five cents, right? Now I need to convert this to dollars. Converting from cents to dollars is really easy. You can remember it because, for instance, if I would write the number uh, one dollar and twenty-five cents, one dollar and twenty-five cents. Ah, that's a mess. I told you I make mistakes, but it's okay, right? Notice, when we go from dollars to cents, that's where the decimal point is. Because one cent is one one-hundredth of a dollar. So we're basically going to divide by a hundred. It just means that we're going to move the decimal points two points to the left, okay? Because if we were to instead do by dollars here, instead of it being 75 cents, it would be 0.75 dollars. So when we get to our answer here, I'm going to move the decimal twice to the left, one, two, and then my answer is $26.25. That's our answer to chicken math. Talk to you soon. I'm going to figure out how to stop this thing. <laughs>